right, so let's go ahead and continue with unit two, um, lesson two. Today we're going to be talking about manipulation of data within the command line here. We're going to build off of last time's concepts, and then we're going to use some more advanced Linux commands. The ones that we're going to be covering today are very useful for manipulating data, searching for data, and then outputting it in a way that we want to. These are a couple of the programs that we're going to be going over today. We'll go over how to use manual pages for programs, how to count lines in programs, and then how to search the file system and uh, for files and directories on the system. And then we're also going to use grep to search within files. And I'll go over something called piping. So the first command that I want to cover is man. This is actually a very useful command here. Let me go ahead and log into my Linux machine here. And again, if you forgot how to install this, you can check out one of the previous videos. I go over that in unit 1.3. So we've gone over a few commands like cat, ls, echo, things like that. So what if we wanted to get some more information on how to use a certain program? Let's say we wanted to get some more information on ls. So we could type in man ls. To go up and down within the manual pages, we can use the up and down arrows. Or we can also use the spacebar to page down. You'll notice there are a lot of options here on the screen. So you have the main program, which is ls. And then if you add these options, so dash a, that's going to give us a different output. If you do a dash capital A, that'll give us another output there. Let's actually try a couple of these. So if we do ls dash l, you'll notice we get a long listing. If I do ls without the dash l, we get the short listing without all the extra details. In a future class, I'm going to go over what all of these things mean here. And if we do ls dash l a, this is adding a dash l and a dash a. So we can actually put two flags or two options using just one dash. So if we do that, you'll notice now we're seeing files that start with a dot. What does this mean? These are hidden files. So any file starting with a dot is a hidden file. So just by typing in man ls, we've been able to learn a little bit more about this program. You could either Google it, but this is actually really useful when there's no internet access or you just want to do some really quick searching for how to use a program. Man is really good for when you know how to use a program, but you may have just forgotten one or two uh, flags. And when I use the term flags, I'm talking about this dash and then when we add an option, right? So ls by itself does something. If we add a flag, we're going to add a dash l to add additional options to that program. So that's what I mean when I refer to flag. So man is pretty self-explanatory. In order to get out of it, we can type q to quit. As you'll notice down here, we just type in q, and that brings us back to our terminal. Now let's go to the next command I want to cover. This one's called word count, so wc. Let's actually use the man page for word count. So man space wc, enter. So let's see what this program does. wc, print new line, word, and byte counts for each file. So essentially we can see how many bytes or how many words or how many lines are in a file. How do we do that? We can actually go down and check some options. You'll notice here where it says dash L, we can print the number of new line counts within a file. So I'm going to hit Q to quit out of that. Let's see what files we've got here. Let's say I wanted to count the number of lines in this auth.log file. What I'm going to do is type in WC, as we saw on the man page, and to count the number of lines, we have to add the L option, or the L flag, and I'll type in auth. And you'll notice it says there are 104 lines in this file. Why is this useful? Sometimes in log files, we want to see how many instances of something happen. We can actually use this command in conjunction with other commands. Essentially, we just want to see how many of something or how many lines are in a file. It's really useful to see how big the file is. So before you open a file, you could say, well, before I open it, I want to see how big it is so I don't just cat out the entire thing to the um, terminal there. So I could ls the files again. Instead, I could do word count dash l test.txt. 
and we see there are 1024 lines in this file here. So this is very useful. We'll come back to this command, use it with other commands as well. Now the find command. This one is actually one of the most useful commands on Linux. It is a little bit tricky to use. It's not as easy as just typing in a search term in a search bar like you would on Windows or Mac or Google. This is going to be something where you have to know the different options and uh, how to search for what you're looking for. So let's take a look at this slide here real quick. This might look a little intimidating at first, but we'll do some examples here. The first part is going to be the actual find command. So we're going to type in find. The next part is going to be where we're searching from. So in this first example here where it says find slash home slash Bob, we're going to be searching from the home Bob directory. And we're going to be searching for the type of file. So we can either search for a directory or a file. And again, a directory is just a folder, like you might see on your Mac or your Windows computer. It's just a folder that holds files or other folders. So in this case, we're going to be looking for a file. Now this part, this is going to mean case insensitive if we put the I. If we use dash name, that means this is the exact name I'm looking for. So we put the dash I name for case insensitive name, and then we type in the name of the file. So let's say we go to the root directory, right? If I type in PWD for print working directory, this shows me exactly where I am in the file system. Before we were in home Cybertrack. So I've just gone back to the root of the file system. I've gone as far back as we can. Let's say we were searching for uh, this test.txt file. So if I typed in find, and let's say I just want to search from here, I could just type the root directory, or I could type in dot for here as well. Remember dot means right here. Dot dot means the previous directory or the parent directory above us. So I'm going to type in find from the root directory. And let's see, let's do a type file since we're searching for a file type. We're not searching for a directory. These are directories. And let's go ahead and type in I name. Let's say we forgot if it was capitalized or not. And then we could type in test.txt. Let's see what we find here. So notice we got a lot of uh, permission denied. That's because it's searching through the entire file system, and we don't have permission to view all the files on the system. We have to be a special user, which we will talk about in another class. But for now, just know we don't have the right permissions. You might have to scroll up to find it here. So you'll notice here, home, Cybertrack, test.txt, we found it. If we wanted to refine our search, just to be a little bit more clear about our location, we could do find home, and then we could search from the home directory. Let me actually just list out the contents of the home directory. So remember, this is the root directory, and then we're in home, and then Cybertrack was the user we were in. There are a lot of other users on the system. Okay, so right now I'm in the root directory. I want to find from home, and let's look for type file, and let's do case insensitive name again for test.txt. And here we go, it says permission denied, permission denied, but we find this file, home, cybertrack, test.txt. And then here, we're permission denied. We do not have access to view these other users. In another class, I'm gonna go over how to get rid of these permission denied errors so we can get just this. It's a little confusing with uh, redirecting outputs and stuff, but for now you just need to know this is how we find certain files. And again, if we want to search for just a certain file and we know the exact case, we're going to leave the I off. So we'll just do type file and the name. What if we wanted to search for a directory? We could actually do this. So from here, I'm in the root directory. I want to find home Cybertrack, or let's just say Cybertrack is the directory we, we want to find. So I want to do find, 
from here and of type directory. Then I'm going to do case insensitive name Cybertrack. And it searches the file system. And if we go up, we should be able to find home Cybertrack. I know this is a little bit messy. Just remember the syntax for find. We're going to go over how to clean this up later so it's easier to find. Okay, so that's how we find files. Generally, we're going to be searching in folders that we already have access to. So in our case, we would be in our home directory. So I type in cd, and that takes me to home Cybertrack. And then we're generally going to be searching within our files here. Another way we can do that is actually ls-r. So this is recursive for ls. We can look through all the contents of each directory within our current directory. And it'll recursively look for all the files and all of the documents and directories uh, within our directory and below each of those directories. So find is really good for finding file names and directory names. It is not used, however, for searching for text within files, so keep this in mind. To search for text within a file, we're going to use a, a program called grep. So grep is a search program that we can use to look within text files. So let's actually type in man grep. So it says print lines matching a pattern. And here is here are some examples, so grep, options, the pattern, the name of the file. So I'm going to hit Q. Let's see, so in this current directory, I have a file called uh, my file. Actually, let's use the, te the test.txt one. So if I do head test.txt, it gives me a little preview of this file. So this just has random words on each file. Let's actually use the auth one as well. So head auth.log gives us a little preview. And this looks like a log file. It's kind of ugly. There's a lot of information. What if we wanted to search through the grep, or sorry, we wanted to search through the file using grep. So I type in grep, and then the phrase that we want to search for. Let's search for the term cyber track inside the file auth.log. So if I search the file auth.log, it has found it on three different lines. And in Ubuntu, it's nice, it'll highlight it red for us. Okay, so it found it on this line, and this is where it found that one instance, and then it found it on this line, found that instance, and then it found it on uh, this line. There's actually one line there. Okay, so that's grep in its simplest form. Let's look at some other options here. So we can actually search for um, words within multiple files. So if we go here, and let's just say I echo, um, I'm going to put my name here, Matt, to my file. I'm going to echo Matt to test. And then I'm going to echo, I'm going to put a capital M, Matt, to random.txt. What if I wanted to search all those files for the term mat? So what I could do is type in grep mat, and then we could type in star, which is wildcard. So anything starting with anything, but ending in txt, I want to search all those files. So as long as the file ends in .txt, it will search the file. But you'll notice it only finds two. So in my file.txt, it found one instance. In test.txt, I found one instance, but in random.txt, it didn't find that instance. Remember, I typed in a capital M for Matt, so it didn't find it. Grep is case sensitive. So we want to use an option uh, dash i. If you can guess what this is based on the find command i name, this is going to be case insensitive as well. So grep space dash i, and then we'll uh, put in the search term Matt. And then let's search through all the files. And then you'll notice we have actually four instances. So in the file my file, there are two instances. There's a line saying my name is Matt. The last line says Matt. And in random.txt, it found Matt with the capital M. 
Okay, and what if we wanted to search through every file in this directory, but also all the directories below? So grep will actually only search the files in this current directory. Notice it only looked through this file, this file, and this file, but it didn't look in pictures or public or downloads or documents. It only stayed in this directory. So if I wanted to, I could type in grep dash r for recursive. And if I wanted, I could do a dash i to signify I want to do case insensitive. Then I could search for a term mat in anything uh, ending in a .txt file. Now there are no other files down here with a .txt, so it's not going to find anything. But if you wanted to, the recursive is going to give you the option to search through all the folders and files below your current uh, position. That brings us to piping. So what is piping? Piping allows us to chain certain commands together. And it's a little confusing at first, but I hope you will eventually understand this concept. So piping takes the output of this command, the first command, and then it becomes the input for this command. So in this example, we have cat space log.txt. So the first command is going to print out the entire file to the terminal. And then what we do is we take that output before we print it out to the terminal, and then we pipe it, or it becomes the input for this new command grep. Okay, so let's actually do an example here of combining commands with pipe. So if we do ls, I can actually see the list of my files here. Let's say I wanted to a cat out the contents of auth.log. Not sure how big the file is. Okay, so if we do that, so we cat out the file. Let's say we wanted to search all of that. So I type in grep cyber track. So now we've taken the entire file and we've piped it into the search function here. So now we get just this output. Now what if I wanted to pipe it again into another program? Remember we used word count dash L, which will count the number of instances or how many lines there are. So here there should be three lines. This is the first entry. So June 15th, the second entry is June 15th. Then we have June 15th, and this is actually a wraparound line, so this is one line here. So if I pipe that entire thing into word count, I should get three. So you'll notice we ran three commands, but we got one output. It's because the output of this command became the input for this command. We ran this command against what this gave us, and then we ran this command against what this gave us. So what I want to do is let's actually try grepping for any line containing a B in it. And let's do case insensitive, so capital B, lowercase b. And let's search in the test.txt file. So it gives us a bunch of outputs here. Now I don't want to go through and count each of those lines here. So I search for all of the files using grep. So I search case insensitive for any line that contains the letter B. So this is one, this is two, three, four, five, six, even though that has two, that's one line, seven, eight, nine, ten, and so on and so on. I can pipe that into word count dash L, and it says there are 146 lines containing the letter B. So while this may not seem super practical right now, there are very practical uses for piping, which we'll go over later in later classes here. Really good for log file manipulation, uh, using IP addresses, sorting data, a really useful tool. So just kind of keep this in mind as we go forward in the class. We'll go over more examples, but I uh, hope you enjoyed this class. Stay tuned. We'll get into some more Linux in the next class.